Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jesse Plants. We need you to subscribe to YouTube by clicking and hitting the bell. If you click and hit the bell, you'll know when we're there. That's YouTube. Click and hit the bell. Let's open in prayer. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that your word is spirit and it's life. And because it is, Lord, we're going to grow today. We're going to learn more about you. We're going to be stronger. And we're going to hear from heaven. And our lives will never, never, ever be the same again. Say this with me. I am, I am a sheep of his pasture. Of his I, hear his voice, I hear his voice. And I obey. And I obey. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so good. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 1 for the final part in our three-part series that we've been studying. How many people were here for one and two, and now you're here for three? Hallelujah. You know, uh, we're going to do a little quick review, but I just want to get into what God has given for me, me for you today. And Pastor Ron was just stepping all over it, and he gave me like an introduction, so it's so wonderful. Wasn't that a great offering teaching? So appreciate Pastor Ron and all the pastoral staff. In fact, Pastor Jonathan, would you stand up? Pa Pastor Betty, would you stand up? Ron, Ronald, would you stand up? I know Joy is in the house. Where is he at in the back? Pastor, connect Pastor. And Pastor Melissa is in with the children. And we just want to give them a great hand clap. Appreciation to them. You know, today is pastor appreciation. And I know that all of you appreciate all of the pastors here at the church. I appreciate all of them. They help me so much. And do y'all appreciate me? Yeah. And I appreciate my husband, too. He's, he's over there. He's been helping me pastor. And I say thank you. He's been doing a good job. We're a team. Amen? Amen. We're going to, we all, how y'all turn to Hebrews chapter 1. You know, this is the, like I said, the third part of our series. And we, uh, earlier, I'm just going to do a quick review because the Word of God is filled with examples of people on earth hearing sounds from heaven, and it tells us how they responded. We, were, uh, we talked about in the first class how, or the first Sunday, how that Adam heard God's voice while he was in the Garden of Eden, but he turned away from it. And then we know that Moses, when he saw the burning bush, turned toward it, and he heard a sound from heaven calling his name. You know, when God's, God is speaking, so it's up to us how we'll respond to it. Amen? And we learned that when Peter, James, and John witnessed the transfiguration of Jesus, uh, they heard a sound from heaven that gave this command. This is my beloved son, hear him. You know, and that command is still echoing in the earth, seeking receptive hearts that will still, still hear him. Right? And today, I wanted you to expect to hear him speak to your heart through his word and by his spirit. Because why great expectation gets great results. If you expect to hear God's voice, you will. That's a faith concept. It's not like you're making it up. It's that he wants to be invited. He wants to be welcomed. Amen? And uh, I want you to expect to hear sounds from heaven that will ignite your world and change your circumstances. Amen? In part one, we saw that sounds from heaven have power. And on the day of Pentecost, 120 men and women were filled with the power of the Holy Ghost and they spoke sounds from heaven that changed the world. And then last Sunday in part two, I taught that sounds from heaven have purpose. They bring instruction, correction, and revelation. Sounds from heaven come to transform lives, impart vision, and empower us to fulfill God's plan in the earth. So I was just thinking when I was driving here today how God gave me a sound from heaven just to build this, sanctuary, to build this church. When we launched the church in 1997, it was because I was obeying a sound from heaven that says, Kathy, I want a church right here in Destrehan. And all of you are the fruit of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And you know, in your life, I'm sure that there are things that God has spoken to your heart that you've obeyed, and you're walking differently today because of that. You heard him say, uh, present, maybe you heard the gospel presented and you opened your life, you opened your heart, and he came in and you were never the same again. Amen. Amen. How many people can agree with that? Amen. Jesus is oh, so awesome. Now, this book of Hebrews that we're about to look at, and we're going to look at three different passages within the book of Hebrews, and it was really hard to narrow it down to just these because it's so rich, but I just want to encourage you to study it out and look even deeper later on. You know, the purpose of this teaching is to help to stir your hearts so that you'll want to go deeper on your own. Because when you do and you take the time to go back and read over the verses of Scripture or review some of the thoughts that the Holy Spirit gives you while you're in church, He's able to help you to go deeper, help you to, to see things in a bit. Because why? Because He wants to know that you're hungry for it. You know, when I know my family wants something special that I cook and there's not a whole lot of those things, but when I know that my family wants something special that I cook, it just stirs me up. And I, I don't care how tired I am, I am or how busy my schedule is, I want to do something about that. Amen. Today is my daughter's birthday. And if you, yes. And you know, we could go to just any restaurant. She's got a lot of favorites. But she asked me, Mama, can you make me a gumbo? And of course, my chest just popped out there. I was like, my gumbo? Of course. And so I remember, it, I mean, it takes a while to make gumbo. And anything that starts with three sti four sticks of butter has got to be delicious. <laughs> and let me tell you, it is. So we're going to have a great family celebration. But, you know, when someone wants you to do something for them, it makes you want to. And I just am so blessed to be able to do that. But God is that way. When you're hungry for him, when you're asking him for something, he wants to show up. He wants to give you exactly what you're asking for. And he's right here in this house today. But the book of Hebrews was written to Jewish Christians. They knew the promises that God spoke to their fathers through Moses and the Old Testament prophets. They also knew that Jesus was a fulfillment of God's promise to send his son as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. Today we're going to look at sounds from heaven have promise. Hebrews chapter 1. Verse 1, read, read through verse 4 in the King James Version of the Bible. It says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these day, last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he hath by himself purged our sins and sat down at the, on the right hand of the majesty on high, verse 4, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now we can go on reading and he's talking about how Jesus was better than all these other things, other prophets, other people that prophesied. Jesus is the best. Amen? Amen. Throughout the Old Testament, we see that sounds from heaven came in many parts and in many ways. And that's what it says, sundry times and divers manners. That's what it really meant. Moses and Abraham heard God speak Joseph and Daniel had dreams and wrote down what God said. Isaiah and Ezekiel had visions. Gideon and Zechariah saw angels. But from all these various ways that God revealed his plan, it was like a perfect harmony, it, like, it, like musical sounds that made up of different parts. So from all these various ways, God revealed his plan like a har perfect harmony as in musical sounds made up of different parts. When I was in high school or through the fifth grade, through in high school, I was in the band. 
And uh, I had my little part to play. You know, I was a clarinet player, and I was not the first chair, so I, I, some, I didn't always play the lead, but there was my part, and every part was so important. And we had to practice, and we had to learn to sight read, because we would go to competition and things like that. And, and I remember how important it was when everybody did their part, and it sounded good. You can tell when somebody didn't practice. You can tell when somebody was off in the end and they, maybe they didn't tune up their instrument. But we need to make sure that we're tuned up and ready to play for Jesus. Amen? He has a great plan. And when we're all working together in perfect harmony, a beautiful sound rises up from the earth and God gets glorified. Amen? And that same beautiful sound is coming down from heaven, seeking out people that will receive it and act on it because sounds from heaven have promise. There's only one plan of God for man. All the prophets gave perfect and harmonious testimony that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and Savior of the world. Isaiah wrote that God gave them visions or, or insight. It said precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So the Old Testament was a series of revelations that we're just unfolding now. But this, it's, uh, the series of revelations began, as recorded by Moses, with Adam, and it terminated with Malachi. And it was a period of more than 3,500 years. But from Malachi to the time of Jesus, the Savior, there are no recorded divine communications. There were no sounds from heaven. You know, there were periods of time in Israel's history where there was no open vision. You know, before the prophet Samuel came in, there was the word of God was rare, it says. But when you're hungry for God and you're obedient to his word, God wants to pour out sounds that will help you to find your way out of the your nasty place you're in into a beautiful place that he has prepared for you. You know, throughout our lives, we hear lots of different voices that try to pull us off track. It's our responsibility to get along with God and hear from him and see what his word says about it. You know, we're not always talking about when I say sounds from heaven, I'm not always talking about hearing an audible voice. I'm basically, more than anything, talking about words that God has already spoken in his word. <laughs> words that are already decla been declared and God we call them promises. They're over, people have counted them. Some said there's over 8,000. Some says there's over 3,000. Most people say there's over 7,000 promises. And those are things that God wants to give to us. And those were all sounds and things that he said that he wanted to get into the earth. You know, I've often said this, and it's a quote from Brother Copeland. He says that you're, you're, you are the prophet of your own life. And what you need to be saying, prophe prophesying to your life, are words from God's, but from the Word of God that He has already declared. So all we need to do is agree with Him. Amen? Words that declare our blessing, our salvation, our provision, our protection, all these great things that He's promised. I mean, this, I, I can't list the whole 7,000. But you could. You could go and look them up and read them and think about them. Day by day, fill your spirit up with the, the wonderful good things that God has in store for us. He says, but in these last days, and these last days began when Jesus stepped foot on this earth, was born into the earth. When he came into the earth, that began the last days, and they're still continuing. And we're, we're in the last of the last days. How many of y'all will agree with that? You just have to look out and see what's going on in the world today to know that the devil is terrified that his days are short. And he's intensifying his efforts to, to pull so many people away from the gospel. He's trying to shut down churches in any way that he can. And I believe that some of the things that have happened are, are for our safety, but there's a lot of it that's happened that's gone a lot too far. Because God wants us to not, he wants us to yield to him and trust him and not yield to the spirit of fear. Amen. So in these last days, God has spoken to us by his son. He's still speaking to us. But we have a responsibility when we hear that sound from heaven, when we hear the promises of Jesus in the word of God. Let's, re let's turn to Hebrews chapter 2. We're going to read verse 1 through 4 as well. It says, are y'all there yet? Amen. 
Hebrews chapter 2, it's just one page over if you're already studying, you're right there. It says, verse 1, Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. So this word that we have should be heeded. The word of God should be listened to, lest, he says, at any time you let it slip. And he says, how should we escape? This is the only word that's going to change our lives. We can't let it slip. We have to pay attention, amen? amen. We have to pay attention to what God is, is saying and make sure that we stick close to him. Why? Because he has some promises that he wants to see fulfilled in your life. It's not that he just wants to hold over these lists of rules and guidelines for you. No, it's because he, this is his plan. This is his method to see to it that you are protected, that you are blessed, that you receive everything that he has for you. Amen? So we have to give earnest heed. You know that earnest heed? Pay attention. Look at, look, you know, spend time in the word of God. Write down, write down what God is telling you and obey it and cherish it. You know, God has given me several words in my life over the, and I'm not every day. I don't get a, a, a specific word, but I continually study and read his word. But there are many moments in my life where I can look back and see I knew God was speaking to me and he was telling me things like I told you earlier with launching this church. But or, uh, after I stepped in as a pastor back in 2017, uh, the, the, I was praying and reading John chapter 14 and how Jesus told, his, told us that he's going to prepare a place for us. And I was just reading that because that's such a beautiful passage of scripture. And when I was reading that, I heard God from heaven speak to my heart. And he says, Kathy, I have prepared you for a place. So I realized that God, not only that he, is he going to prepare a place for me in heaven, he has also prepared me for a place. And that place is as pastor of the church. But there God has also prepared you for a place. Because each one of us are strategic, strategically positioned by God for such a time as this. God has you placed exactly where you are in your family, maybe in your business, in the environment that you're in, because there are, pe there are people there that I could never reach or that Jesse could never reach. But each of us have a part to play in the wonderful plan of God. It's our responsibility to see to it that we're, we're, we're charged up by His Spirit, that we're full of His Word, and that we're hearing from Him so that we can speak words that will help others that He brings us into contact with. Amen. So often you may not even realize that you're speaking the words of God. You're, not, you're speaking what God told you to say. I was talking with Keisha Friday night, and she was telling me how she interacted with this Jewish woman who, and nothing's by chance, and they started opening up and talking about the Messiah. And uh, God has helped her to study some things so she was able to have that contact. That was no accident God led you to train and teach and learn those things because God had a message he wanted to give to that person. All of us have a message that God wants us to get to someone. And you know, it may not be every day, but there'll be a moment at a time and you'll know by the Spirit of God that God positioned you for that purpose. I'm looking at Miss Margie, she's nodding because I know she's used, God uses her to speak for him many times change people's lives. I'm looking at many of you in here who have had those conversations and you know that you've been positioned and used by God to speak words that transform lives. Amen. Many times, sometimes it'll be just a smile, it'll be an encouragement, but God wants to use us to touch people all around the world. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 6. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 6. <clears throat> and we're going to read in the Message Bible... So if you don't have that translation, they're going to put it on the screen for you. This is so powerful. Because when God calls us to do something, he wants us to get with the program. 
don't you hate it when you, I mean, my, 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 we're trying to work on my granddaughter because my, my daughter says that she just, my granddaughter has just one speed and she's not in a hurry. You know, waking up for school, they started a few weeks ago going back to full-time school and now that means early mornings again. And so we, we, we all know people in our life that seem to have one speed. And we're always saying, come on, hurry up, hurry up. Well, God wants us to kick it up in gear and go up faster. Amen. Kick it up a notch. Amen. You can do this. Amen. Say, I can do this. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, verse 20. Uh, says, don't drag you, verse 12, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, we're going to read quite a few passages of scripture. They'll put it on the screen for us. Verse 12, don't drag your feet, be like those who stay the course with committed faith, and then get everything promised to them. Isn't that wonderful? Think about that. When you don't drag your feet, you stay on course, and you're committed with your faith, you're going to get everything that is promised to you. That's a powerful promise. And there's some more promise stuff. He says, this is an example, verse 13. When God made his promise to Abraham, he backed it to the hilt, putting his own reputation on the line. He said, I promise that I'll bless you with everything I have. Bless and bless and bless. Where are you at? 13? Oh, there it is. I see how it's going. I'm looking at the screen, and it's uh, just putting a little more on than I expected. Well, y'all, y'all just got a little head start right there. That's okay. Anybody ready for that bless and bless and bless? Yeah. Blessing upon blessing upon blessing. Like on Friday night, Brother Savelle talked about putting your hands out. How many people got your hands out? You're ready for your blessing. Well, God is ready to bless you and bless and bless and bless. So ex get your expectation out there. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse... Uh, 15, Abraham stuck it out and got everything that, he, that had been promised to him. When people make promises, they guarantee them by appeal to some authority above them so that if there's any question that they'll make good on the promise, the authority will back them up. When God wanted to guarantee his promises, he gave his word. Hallelujah, Hallelujah a rock-solid guarantee. Verse 18, God can't break his word, and because his word cannot change, the promise is likewise unchangeable. We who have run for our very lives to God have every reason to grab the promised hope with both hands and never let go. So you put your hands out to receive, but you grab them and never let them go. That's our commitment. When we hear a sound from heaven giving us promise, we need to grab hold of it and never let it go till we see it come to pass. I, you know, it doesn't matter if it's 20 years. It doesn't matter if it's 40. We're looking at eternity right here. Amen? We can't give up on the good promises of God. Don't drag your feet. Be like those who stay on the course with committed faith, and then we get everything that we're promised. Hallelujah. Where did I go in verse 19? Let me go back and read 18, guys. God can't break his word, and because his word cannot change, the promise is likewise unchangeable. We who have run our very lives to God have every reason to grab the promise, promised hope with both hands and never let go. It's an unbreakable Think about this. It's an unbreakable spiritual lifeline reaching past all appearances right to the very presence of God where Jesus, running on ahead of us, has taken up his permanent post as high priest for us in the order of Melchizedek. So God is, all, Jesus is already ahead of us, cheering us on, wanting us to achieve the promises that he has given us. I'm excited about that. How about you guys? You know, God saw to it that over 7,000 of his promises were recorded in his word for us to read and declare every day. And one of the pro greatest promises is that heaven will hear and respond to your faith-filled voice. I'm going to say that again. One of the greatest promises is that heaven will hear and respond to your faith-filled voice. Let's say that together. 
I, heaven will hear and respond to my faith-filled voice. You know, God has always honored the voice of those that spoke out in faith, and he will honor your voice. Faith, based on what his word has said, has the power to change your life, change your circumstance, equip you to be an overcomer in this life. Amen? Think about how when Joshua was facing the, the, the city of Jericho, he, God gave them a specific plan. He heard sounds from heaven with a detailed plan of what to do. The plan seemed ridiculous in the natural. Go walk around real quiet. Don't say nothing one day. Do it again the next day. All of the priests, you know, all of you go around there again and again. And on the seventh day, you go around seven times. And then at that point, there was a sound from the earth that had to go out. Boom, the walls came flat and they were able to walk through it. God is able to give us a detailed, specific plan to show us how to walk into the victory that we need. Amen. The victory that he's promised. Amen. Why? Because his reputation is on the line. When Joshua was in the middle of a great battle, he commanded the sun and the moon to stand still until victory was won, and it obeyed him. That was a person on the earth speaking faith-filled words that, that, that affected the, the heavens, hallelujah, in the natural. And the sound of the shout made, like I said, made the walls fall down. I'm getting ahead of myself. But with his own voice also, the prophet Elijah called fire down from heaven, and he multiplied food, and he raised it out. I mean, these are sounds that were recorded in the Word of God that's, that were spectacular, supernatural. Those same things. God is not even limited to that. He can do a brand new thing in the earth today. He can raise you up to speak to the non-existent things that are in your life, to breathe mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation into that dead, lifeless thing that you may call a life or a business or a relationship. God wants to give you words that you can speak and declare that will breathe life into that situation. You are the prophet of your own life. Go ahead and say something. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Mark eleven twenty three. Can't talk about speaking and saying we're faithful words without reading Mark eleven twenty three. <laughs> Throughout Jesus' earthly ministry, he demonstrated how everything in the earth had to respond to the sound of faith-filled words. So whether it was a barren fig tree, a tax bill, or a dead man, remember Lazarus. Jesus demonstrated that creation must respond to the voice of faith. Amen. So let's read Mark eleven twenty three 23 and see the powerful promise that Jesus gave that day. That promise is still echoing for us. It's still instructions for us. It's still a great recipe for the success that you need in life. It says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Wow. That's a powerful passage of Scripture. That's one that needs to be on the refrigerator or on your, uh, on your phone or someplace where you can go and look at it over and over again. And you know what? If you are a whosoever, you need to be talking to whatsoever that needs to be removed. Don't wait for sister so-and-so or, or me or somebody else to come and do it for you. God wants to position you and help you to realize that you have the power within you. Amen? to do it yourself with his help. If you are a whosoever, you need to be talking to whatsoever that needs to be removed. And this is a sound that came from the mouth of Jesus. It's a promise to us. And it was spoken so that it would be written. It was written. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Anybody see it in your Bible that it was written? Okay, well, it was spoken by Jesus so that it would be written, and it was written so that it would be spoken by you, by whosoever, whosoever would believe it. And when they do that and they apply it, it changes everything. 
Let's turn to Psalms 91. We may not get a chance to, to read as much as I had wanted, but we're going to briefly go over this, Psalm 91, because if you've made Jesus Christ your Lord, protection is God's promise to you. This series could probably go on through till Jesus comes and just talking about each promise that God has. But we're going to sit around on this promise of protection because I believe that's what we need to be reminded of today. There's, there's so many de- bad uh, reports going out there on, and we need to stand in the protection of God, right? No matter whether it's a, it's a bad report about health or a bad report about economy, Whatever the situation may be, God has an answer to whatever problem the devil might hurl towards us even tomorrow. Amen? You made Jesus Christ your Lord. Protection is God's promise to you. Amen? Say that with me. Protection Protection. is God's promise promise to me. me. You know, if if you know the Word of God, it's going to actually save your life. It will. If you believe God's promises of protection, you can live securely in this dangerous world. But it won't come automatically. Like every other promise, it needs to be activated by faith. Faith Faith-filled words in your heart that come out of your own mouth that speak to those situations that you're facing. Amen? Are y'all getting charged up? Hallelujah. Do you hear the sound from heaven just amplifying this? It's his word. And in Psalm 91, we can see how much God wants to protect us. Even from the first verse, it begins to show us how to receive his protection. And we're going to read it in the Amplified Bible. We're going to try to read as much of it as we can today. Psalms 91, beginning in verse 1, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. That is so powerful. Notice that in order to activate protection in your life, you're going to have to do something. There's a condition to this promise. So remaining stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty is the result of dwelling in that secret place. Listen to that. It says dwells, not visits. The King James, I think it's some some versions may use the word abides. And it just means that you're spending so much time in the Word of God and His presence that truth governs your actions without even a conscious thought. I'm going to say that again. When you're dwelling with God, it just means that you're spending so much time in the Word of God and in His presence that His truth governs your actions without even a conscious thought. It's called muscle memory. I remember I I had to go and learn how to shoot a gun. And I remember going to the, I was applying for a concealed permit to carry a weapon. And uh, I remember going to the class and they did a lesson and, and if any of you have done that, you know, they talk, this guy who taught the class talked about muscle memory, how you have to train your brain to learn these things so that you can do it without even thinking about it. You understand? And this was a whole new thing to me. I had, once in a while, I had picked up a gun and shot at something, but he wanted to show us and train us and help us to go on another level. And that's what happened that day. You may remember a year ago, whatever it was, that, that someone came into a church building and there was this one security guy that was in there. I think he was, I don't know if he was on a police force and he was serving as a volunteer in the church. It was like muscle memory kicked in and he, he took care of the problem right then and there. That's, you don't have time to say, okay, now where's that trigger? Where are my bullets? No, he had to act instantly and because of that, lives were saved. When we develop muscle memory regarding what God's Word has already said, the truth of God is going to kick in when we need it the most. We don't have to think about, oh, where's that scripture? You know, it's going to rise up within you if you put it in there. Amen? My brother-in-law taught me how to ride my motorcycle. I had a a trike given to me. I I had lots of goals in my life. I just had a goal. I don't know why I wanted to learn to ride my own motorcycle because I would ride with Jesse, and uh, sometimes he wouldn't want to ride, and I'd say, well, let's go ride. No, I'm too tired. I don't want to ride. I said, I want to ride my own motorcycle. 
And so I remember learning a little bit uh, with a friend of mine named Phyllis Moore. She showed me just a little bit, but when I got my own, I needed some practical instruction. I needed somebody that would sit with me to help me develop my mental muscles in this area. And uh, I didn't want Jesse to teach me because I just wanted to stay married. <laughs> but my brother-in-law, Ricky Bartley, is so very gentle, and he was very helpful, and he kept telling me how you don't need a, you have to train yourself, or it's a mental muscle, so that you don't even have to think about what you're doing with those controls, whether you're putting the brakes on, because what you need to be concentrating on is what's on the road ahead not on how you brake the motorcycle or how you put the gas on or where your blinkers are or anything like that. And so that's what's so important. So in practical ways, in anything in life is that way. All of us learn mental muscles, had developed mental muscles for certain tasks, but it applies so really so true with the Word of God. When we put it in our heart, it's gonna come out of our, heart, out of our mouth and, and change a situation. God is gonna bring it to our remembrance to help us to fulfill and do what, do what needs doing. Say what needs saying and change what needs changing. Amen. Give the Lord a shout in this house. And one of those powerful uh, passages or chapters in the Bible is this 91st Psalm. It's a, this is a good one to put in your heart and to, to lay a foundation in you so that when the attacks come or when difficulties arise, you know that you have the protection of God that's been promised to you in His Word. So we need to take the 91st Psalm into our heart until it becomes engrafted in there, so it becomes like second nature. And you can speak it, but it's not just empty words, it's powerful words, amen? amen. Powerful words. Some people just spat off scripture and it's just coming out of their head. I'm talking about verses and the Bible that comes out of your heart and transforms your mind. So when your mind looks at something and says, oh, that's difficult, no, your spirit rises up and says, uh-oh, we can handle this. God is with me. Amen. Nothing is impossible with me. Remember this, it's the word that you act on today that will get you delivered. It's not what you heard last year. It's not even what you know. It's what you do. I must say that again. It's not what you heard last year that's going to make a difference in your life, whether you receive that protection, that comfort, everything that God has for you. It's not even what you know. It is what you do. We have to obey the Word of God. Ron talked about that in the offering. Disobedience can be dangerous. And when you sin, you get out from under God's protective covering. Thankfully, we're living in a day of grace and mercy, so it's never too late to call upon the Lord. No matter what you've even done this morning, you could reach out and ask God's forgiveness, and He can restore you to wholeness so that you can be, be right in a position where you can receive what you need in life. You don't have to worry about, oh, what did I do? Did I do something wrong? I remember talking with a, a friend who had been attacked with cancer, and they're thinking, you know, they're just searching themselves and, and saying, oh, I must have done something to, to bring this on me. I said, not necessarily. I mean, it's good to search your heart, but if you remember Job, the Bible talks about, God says to, to Satan, I see that you come to to torment my servant Job without cause. So don't let the devil heap on condemnation just because you're experiencing difficulty. Satan trespasses, and it's up to us to stand our ground and tell him to get his hand off of our family, get his hand off of our promise. Hallelujah. 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 If you haven't been dwelling in the Word and walking in obedience, it will be difficult to call upon Him in faith when trouble comes. But when you turn your face toward Him and say, Lord, forgive me, He does. And He reinstates you right to that place of, prom of provision and protection. You know, there's something else important about a person who dwells in the protective shadow of the Almighty. And let's look at verse 2. It tells us what it is. He speaks or she speaks in faith. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. On Him I lean and rely, and in Him I confidently trust. Love that. You know, this person is doing more than just trusting God with his heart. He's saying it with his mouth. And when you say it with your mouth, even if you don't feel it in your heart quite yet, you start renewing your mind to what God has said. You start changing the way you think. 
So many of us have been religiously brainwashed instead of New Testament taught. And we're biblical illiterates. We need to find out what God's Word has said for us, what our promises are, and walk in them. I don't think God wants a feeble, skinny church. He wants a fat, a, fa a lean, clean, lean, mean, fight machine. And I'm talking about my spirit. You can't look at my earth suit. Inside, I'm a dynamo. And like I often say, like Mr. T said, I pity the fool that tried to take what I got. I love it. You know, when he just thinks about taking away something that belongs to me, he's declared war on the wrong person. And so we need to say that the Lord is our refuge. We need to say he is my fortress. He is my God. And on him I lean. On him I rely. And in him I confidently trust. You need to say it and build that muscle memory till you know it. You don't just know it in your head, you know it in your knower, right? He says, I know in whom I have believed, and I am fully persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And this person in Psalm 2 is doing more than just trusting God with his heart. He's saying it with his mouth. And that's what we all need to be doing too. Faith brings God's supernatural power into this natural realm. Faith is released into the natural realm by words. Faith is released into this natural realm by words. That tells me we need to be saying something. So we need to make up our mind right now to get our mouth in line with God's word. And when we do, things are going to change. When you read Psalms 91, remember this. The first two verses are what we do and what we say. And then the rest of them, down from 3 through 16, is God's answer, his promise, and his commitment to us. When we do our part, trusting and saying, God does his part, which is delivering and preserving. Let's just read a few of them. We may not comment on all of them because of the time, but let's look at this. I want you to get this in your heart. Verse 3. For then, he says, then, well, what it was the then, after you dwell, after you say. He says, for then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from deadly pestilence. Verse 4. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you shall trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. And that buckler literally means surrounding. And it's sort of like a shield covering you all over. Instead of just being in the front, it surrounds you. Amen. Kind of like that Iron Man suit. You ever saw the Iron Man movie? It just sucks in there. That, and it's better than that. Verse 5. You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the arrow, the evil plots, and slanders of the wicked that flies by day. So I love this part. It says, you will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. That can be your confession. Let's say this together. I will not be afraid. See, that phrase, I will not be afraid, is both a promise and a command. You, you do not dare to be afraid. So you trans fear, is, fear is really faith in what the devil has said. We need to turn the tables on that and believe what God has said. Amen. Things of the Spirit, I want to tell you this, are highly contagious. You can learn to trust God. Yes. The more you get around people that are speaking faith-filled words and stirring you up, yes. it's going it's to get on you. Right. Every time you come to church and you hear words of strength and power, you are going to get stronger and stronger every time. And you need to realize that because you're stronger than you know. Because you've heard the word of God when you come in here, but you're putting it, when you put it into practice, it grows exponentially. Hallelujah. So things of the spirit are highly contagious. You can learn to trust God. Instead of worrying about your troubles and your problems, you can sing praises to the Lord and get stronger every day. Verse 6, and he says, uh, don't be afraid of the terror of the night in five. And then he says, I'm going to continue five and six together. 
It says, you shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the arrow, the evil plots and slanders of the wicked that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the destruction and sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday. Verse 7, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let that be your confidence today. Yeah, it doesn't matter what, what news reports you hear, how many things are going on in another city or even in your city. A thousand, it says, may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. It, that's talking about the ones who abide in God's promise, dwell in God's presence and say, this is something you could be saying. In fact, years ago, I put all this passage of Scripture in my notebook, and I put my family's name next to it. And I actually changed it. Instead of you, I would put like Meredith, or I put Jody, or I put Jesse. I put myself. Put yourself right there in the middle of that word and begin to declare it. Realize it belongs. Take ownership of that word. Receive it into your heart. He says, verse 8, only a spectator shall you be yourself inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High as you witness the reward of the wicked. That is a great promise. I'm going to receive that one for me. I'm going to receive it for you too. How many people believe in for that? And verse 9 says, Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High God, the Most High your dwelling place, there shall no evil befall you, nor any plague or calamity come near your tent or your dwelling or your house. Yes. This is a promise of divinely protected health. And we need to be putting our hearts, letting these words come in our heart and changing our, change our way of thinking. Amen? So that when attacks come, we can push it back with our faith. We don't need to be afraid of a bad report because even if we get a bad report, we know how to change it and turn it around with the words of our mouth, with our faith-filled words based on God's promises. Hallelujah. Now, these passages in 9 and 10 that we just read, it promises protection from sickness as a blessing of the redeemed life. It belongs to you. Say, that belongs to me. And the word plague is used of something that is inflicted on a body and was specifically used to refer to spots of leprosy. And here the Lord describes it as an abiding defense. As a de Wait, here the Lord describes an abiding defense against inflicted disease. But the promise is conditional upon making the Lord your true refuge and habitation. So how can we do this? Well, those two words in Hebrews 9 give us the answer. The word is, is makesh, it's translated refuge. It means a shelter, a place of trust. And it's derived from another word that means to flee for protection, to confide in. And this other word was a second word that meant dwelling place, and it indicates a retreat. It comes from another root word which describes the security of intimately dwelling together as in marriage. So this intimacy with God is a, is a protection against the attacks of the enemy. Those missiles, those weapons, those arrows, those things that are flung at you from out of nowhere. You can stand strong and know that God can help you to turn that thing around. Amen? And these key words in this verse that we just talked about show us a principle. When we make the Lord our refuge and habitation by trusting Him, taking our cares, fears, and needs to Him, by seeking His counsel and spending times of refreshing with Him. Are you getting feeling a little bit refreshed? Yes. Whew. And by loving Him and walking closely with Him through every day, we actually enter into a sheltered place of promise regarding our health. So we have a promise of divine health, divine healing, divine health, divine life that's available to the church. And it's time that we recognize that and pull it in and believe it and begin to declare it and expect it. So often we don't even know about it, let alone declare it and expect it. But God wants us to put it in our heart and let it come out of our mouth 
I love to say that because it's so true. Let's go to verse 11. It says, for he will give his angels charge, a special charge over you to accompany and defend. I didn't do a thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. For he will give his angels a special charge over you to accompany and defend and preserve you in all your ways of obedience and service. Hallelujah. This was partially quoted by Satan during Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. But Satan omitted the words, in all thy ways. He added the phrase, at any time, showing how he misquotes and misapplies the scripture. So he's going to give his, special, his angels special charge over you to accompany and defend and preserve you in all your ways of obedience and service. So we have that great promise. Verse 12. I think we're going to get through this. <laughs> Verse 12. And they shall bear you up on their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent shall you trample underfoot. So this promise is the power over wild beasts and creeping things as well as over satanic uh, powers that's symbolized by them. Verse 14. And this says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows and understands my name, has a personal knowledge of my mercy, love, and kindness, trusts and relies on me, knowing I will never forsake him. No, never. That is a powerful promise. Are y'all learning something today? Are y'all getting stronger, expecting God to provide for you and protect you? Verse 15, let's go on. He says, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And verse 16, finally, the last verse says, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So it's God's plan to protect you so that you can live a long, healthy life and show you his salvation. There's, God has a great promise, right? It's just one of the amazing many, many promises that was a sound from heaven that was given to someone, and they wrote it down. It, they heard from heaven and wrote these things down. And when, it, when we read them and put them in our heart and let it come out, let it, we let it come out of our own mouth, we begin to get renewed. Our mind changes. We start re really receiving and believing what God has said. And that's what's called abiding or dwelling in the presence of God. Hallelujah. The Bible is packed with powerful promises of God that cover every known need in life, here on this earth and hereafter. And each one is a sound from heaven that was written for you. Amen. And in this message, we saw that sounds from heaven have power, sounds from heaven have purpose, and sounds from heaven have promise. Sounds from heaven that declare salvation, healing, deliverance, prosperity, protection, and every promise that came out of God's mouth will never pass away. Praise the Lord. I want you to discover the power. I want you to surrender to his purpose. I want you to receive his promise because it belongs to you today. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you for your word, that it's spirit and it's life, and it is unlocking supernatural resources, supernatural understanding, opening up our hearts and our minds to know exactly who we are in you. And because of the power that you have deposited within us, we can rise up in this life and stand and bring a light to you, Lord, to glorify you, to show the world that we can stand victorious over any attack of the enemy. Lord, I thank you that we're going to discover the power of your gospel, the words that you have spoken from heaven that you've written down for us. We're going to surrender to the purpose that you gave to our lives, Lord, because we're going to be obedient and do what you've called us to do. We're going to put your word first place. And Lord, I thank you that we're going to receive your promise. Every promise that you've given to us into your word is available to us. Lord, I thank you because of this, we have been empowered by your spirit to go forth and do wonders and exploits because you are walking with us, confirming your word 
with signs following. And Lord, we thank you for that. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.